UIM ABP Aquabike Championship returns to the scenic shores of Olbia for the second round at the Regione Sardegna Grand Prix of Italy. Over three days of thrilling high-speed racing saw a record 167 riders from 31 countries competing in the waters of Olbia Harbor. Fans both local and international lined up along the harbor's edge for unparalleled access to the non-stop aquatic motor racing. Event sponsors San Miguel and Tenute Grego Wines entertained guests and dignitaries in the VIP tent and along the promenade of Olbia Harbor with both the mayor of Olbia, Mr. Settimo Nizzi, and the president of the UIM, Mr. Raffaele Chiulli, taking part in this special event. Very much impressed by the lifestyle of these people. It's lovely to walk through the, the dry pit area and to see families, to see campers, to see people happy and passionate about the sport. This means a lot. So I'm very much positively impressed. So this is my sixth go around here in Sardinia and I love it. I absolutely love the town. It's, uh, it has this main strip. The port is great. The water is amazing. And uh, scenery, man, scenery in Italy. Can't go wrong here. Situated on the northeastern coast of Sardinia, Olbia is renowned for its rich history, scenic landscapes, and vibrant culture. The breathtaking Sardinian coastline with its pristine beaches, crystal clear waters, and luxury resorts draws tourists from around the globe. Olbia's historic center features charming cobblestone streets, traditional Sardinian architecture, and a variety of restaurants and bars. The local cuisine, deeply rooted in Sardinian traditions, offers a delightful gastronomic experience with fresh seafood, hearty pastas, and the island's renowned wines. Olbia offers visitors a unique and enriching experience, making it a true gem of the Mediterranean. The notoriously choppy waters of Olbia Harbor were further exacerbated by strong winds throughout most of the three-day event. In a break from tradition, the organizers decided to change the track direction to clockwise, placing the parallel section close to the harbor walls. The resulting intensification of waves thoroughly tested the riders' technical abilities and gave fans an unforgettable spectacle. Uh, that's good for, uh, you know, it makes, uh, separates kind of the riders and the, you know, the skis. You know, a lot of guys, you know, have some fast skis, but they're not the best riders. This separates, you know, a good rider and the good skis. Uh, when we turn at right and run about, it's uh, more out there than, um, than in stand-up because we push the gas uh, with the right hand and uh, for our arm, it's really hard. Double split is on the the part of the track where there is a lot of waves, so it will be great for the spectator and uh, uh, I think the race will be great this weekend. The record-breaking turnout saw contestants fill the ranks with 31 nations represented in 10 categories, including runabout GP1, GP2 and GP4, along with the GP4 ladies' classes. A further five athletes contested the freestyle competition. The ski division also had a full roster of riders compete in GP1, GP2, GP3 and GP4, as well as ladies GP1. In this program, we bring you highlights from the Runabout GP1, Runabout GP2, Runabout GP4 and Runabout GP4 ladies competition, along with the freestyle action. Riding the biggest and fastest skis on the tour and competing for the coveted Blue Ribbon Prize, 22-year-old Samuel Johansson sits atop the overall standings. The five-time Swedish champion won his first ever Grand Prix in Vietnam and is hoping to continue his successful start to the season and maintain his lead into Lake Toba, Indonesia. Yeah, I had an amazing time in Vietnam, managed to win the race there. and. Yeah, we're coming to this weekend, hoping to keep and maybe even extend the points lead, leading into Indonesia, which is the final round. Yeah, I hope, of course, to manage to clinch the World Championship in Indonesia, and that's the goal of the season. Defending World Champion Francois Midori is tied on points with Johansson after two thrilling motos in Quignon City. The French rider will aim for a podium finish to bolster his chances of repeating last year's success. 
I have the same point like uh, Samuel and uh, there is Casa just behind us. So I hope to finish in front of them at the end of the, the weekend. So the level is very high and uh, the battle will be very hard uh, during the, the two motos. Uh, in this condition, it's, it's uh, really, really complicated to, to finish for the ski for us. So many things can happen and uh, I try to do my best to, to win the race tomorrow. Teammate and fellow French rider Jeremy Perez had some tough times in Vietnam and broke down in both two motos. Perez comes to the familiar waters of Sardinia with a new setup and engine on his skis in hopes of some crucial championship points. I win here two times or three times, I don't remember exactly. And I come here again for win after uh, my dispute that uh, is happened in Vietnam. I can finish the race. I hope to do something very good and uh, for me, I look for the top three and but win better. There is a, a new engine from Sido, it's a, from the 325, it's a new, new engine. So we put this new engine with all our parts uh, from Easy Rider, with new supercharge, so it's one big test for us. Kuwaiti rider Yusuf Al Abdul Razak is back in Italy after back issues prevented him from competing in Vietnam. He'll brave the rough waters of Olbia to test himself and bring some points before the tour heads east. During that time, um, my back, uh, the back injury came back again, and it wasn't smart if I race at that time. So I was like, let me see how it feels. Maybe it needs a short time, but the pain is still there. And uh, I'm here now in Italy, trying to see how uh, my back handles it. Uh, it doesn't look good, to be honest. and. Uh, now I'm going to do the pole position and uh, then see the feedbacks and get some massage, physio, whichever uh, helps to get me out there. Seasoned rider and American legend in jet ski racing, Dustin Farthing, will compete for the first time in the ABP Aquabike in Olbia. Farthing is keen to prove himself on the European stage and showcase his talents on the island of Sardinia. The uh, race is a great venue, great location. The organization puts on a great race and, uh, you know, obviously come to win, you know. Uh, had a great practice this morning and then, uh, you know, we just had a little bit of uh, difficulty just now in qualifying, but, you know, we'll get back out there for tomorrow. Fellow countryman and perennial contender Anthony Radicic was kept out of both motos in Vietnam due to mechanical issues with his ski. Keen to get his season underway, Radicic and his team came to Olbia with a brand new engine, hoping to claw back some championship points. Well, my expectations are always to win, but uh, feelings are, you know, I'm a little bit uh, apprehensive because the weather is... Uh, Pretty, pretty, pretty windy out here and it gets pretty like, rough out on the water so uh, it's definitely going to be a bumpy ride out there and I uh, got a brand new engine from Vietnam where we uh, suffered a uh, catastrophic failure so a new engine is going to be uh, uh, quite, quite promising here so uh, I'm looking to stretch my arms out and really uh, get after it out there. Estonian youngster Matthias Seaman has progressed from runabout GP2 division and is eager to make his mark on this year's GP1 class. GP2 is a good farm, farm up for a GP1. If, if I decide, then I still race in GP2 because it's good for muscles, for training. So GP1 is harder, definitely, but I think both is hard. A packed field of riders also has Hungarian Georgi Kasha and Portuguese Lino Arajo, as well as Ruben Jimenez Riquelme from Spain and Andrei Wisniewski from Poland, bringing their talents to Sardinia to battle it out in the runabout GP1 class. Now it's time for Moto1 and the riders head out for the parade lap. This is what it's all about. The lineup, according to qualification results, sees Francois Midori start from first position with Matthias Seaman, Samuel Johansson, and Georgi Kasha starting in second, third, and fourth, respectively. Yusuf Al Abdul Razak had to pull out of the competition just before the start, following a flare up of an existing back injury. And the lights are off, and the race is on with a good start from both Jeremy Perez and Georgi Kasha. Georgi Kasha takes the whole shot with Martin Dulik hot on his heels. At the end of the start lap, it's Kasha first, Dulik second with Perez in third, Francois Midori is fourth, Matthias Seaman in fifth. 
Dulik is racing well and giving chase to the seasoned Hungarian veteran with Jeremy Perez close behind looking for his opportunity to attack. Coming into the second lap, the top three remain the same with the riders bunched up close. But halfway into the lap, Kaszewski seems to die and the Hungarian is dead in the water. Dulik and Perez now move up to first and second. Midori is now third. But almost immediately after taking the lead, Dulik makes a mistake and goes to the wrong buoy. Perez pounces on the opportunity and moves into the lead. Coming out of the parallel, Dulik has to take his penalty buoy and loses more time. Midori now moves to second and Seaman is third. In the following lap, the gap between Seaman, Midori and Perez closes and the top three are bunched up very close together. On the parallel, utter disaster for Perez who breaks down again. That's his third consecutive moto with mechanical issues. He has to abandon the race and his bad luck continues. Yeah, again and again. The bad luck uh, follow me from Vietnam. Uh, I can't finish a race. I don't know what is happened. I make a very good start. I get on the old shot uh, number, number three, three position. And I passed after two laps first. I said, okay, that uh, it's a good way. And after... Uh, I don't know, trouble engine, I don't know what is happened and uh, I will see you again uh, next time the, the podium, so that is the way. Back on the water, Midori is now the leader, but a missed buoy means he has to take his penalty lap, which sees Seaman seize the opportunity and take first position. The Estonian youngster is having quite a race. Laps run down and Seaman is still in the lead, but with the defending champion Midori giving chase, can he hold on to the moto win? <laughs> on the seventh lap, Johansson challenges Dulik, coming out of the parallel for third position and manages to outpace the Czech rider to move into third position. On the eighth lap, the riders are contending with very heavy chop and Seaman smashes hard into a wave which momentarily stops his engine. He quickly recovers and manages to continue without losing his position. Midori is in pursuit but the gap is getting wider with each passing lap. On the following lap, Johansson starts closing in on Midori and tries to overtake him just like he did in Vietnam. Coming out of the last turn and into the final stretch and Matthias Seaman wins his first ever runabout GP1 moto and does so by a sizable margin. Fantastic racing from the youngster. Final Moto1 results are Seaman in first, Midori in second, with Johansson third and Dulik fourth, Wisniewski comes in fifth and Araujo in sixth. It was uh, harder than I thought because uh, I think uh, last two laps I was feeling like I drove up but uh, still I see I can do better. This is all I needed all the time when I was uh, driving with jet ski so this is where I put all my effort for the life. The always popular freestyle competition offers fans a glimpse of what is possible when both athlete and machine are pushed to the limits of physical performance. The tumbles, turns, dives and flips are all judged along with crowd interaction to award a final score to the riders. The man who sits at the top of the standings is Rashid Al Mullah from the United Arab Emirates. Considered one of the best freestylers globally, Al Mullah's unrivaled aerial acrobatics is sure to wow the crowd in Olbia. We have double fun in Sardinia than Vietnam, and we, I think, we will have more the, the new trick, and uh, I will win. Uh, Mariani, if happen some problem to my ski, maybe. But if my ski is running very good, very far. 
Italian Roberto Mariani, nicknamed Superman, is the defending world champion and hopes his high-flying routine, along with signature moves, will bring him glory in front of his home nation. His fellow countryman, Massimo Accumulo, is also a crowd-pleaser. But will his fast and energetic combinations be enough to get him a podium spot? Portuguese airline pilot Paulo Nunes always pushes the boundaries with his aerial acrobatics and aims to please the masses of spectators that show so much interest in this event. The Moroccan tumbler Yassine Fadli is always a crowd favorite and aims to please with his high energy and dynamic routine. It's been a couple of years but it's always a pleasure to come here. To be honest, it's, uh, it's just the weather is fantastic, people are great, so it's awesome. Yeah, you're right, we come from a country where the, it's pretty much sunny all the time, but you know you know what, it's still, it's still warm, you're right, but we, we keep enjoying it. Portuguese rider Polo Nunes executed a series of combos, stacking barrel rolls and backflips that earned his fifth place with 16 points. <laughs> Moroccan Yassine Fadli also put in a solid performance with his sharp combination of backflips and barrel rolls which earned him 4th place with 36 points. Italian Massimo Accumulo was next and he put on a great show, wowing the crowds with a refined combination of backflips, 360s and power rolls. He placed third with 40 points. Next up, world champion Roberto Mariani took center stage in Olbia. The Italian ace put in a polished performance, landing back-to-back -back 360s, power rolls, and his signature Superman move with smooth and crisp transitions. His 44 points earned him the second spot. However, Rashid al Mullah was head and shoulders above the rest as he soared high above the water with his remarkable combination of flips, tricks and power rolls. His agile and precise routine, including his double backflip, earned him 50 points and the Grand Prix title. The final Grand Prix prize goes to Rashid Al Mullah with Roberto Mariani in second place and Massimo Accumulo in third. First of all, thanks for you guys and thanks uh, Sardinia and thanks for Abu Dhabi team uh, to uh, sponsor me to be here. I told you from the beginning we were, this uh, Sardinia will be double fun and uh, today we have uh, amazing run. Moto2 was a little bit uh, Ricky, we have a little issue in my ski. It was something wrong with the carbs, but uh, I, I did a good show also. In the World Championship standings, Rashid Al Mullah leads with Roberto Mariani in second and Paulo Nunes in third. Besides the Runabout GP1 competition, there were also tough battles in GP2, GP4 and the GP4 ladies categories in the Regione Sardegna Grand Prix of Italy in Olbia. In the GP4 ladies category, Moto1 and Moto3 victories brought French riders Cyril Bram the GP4 ladies overall title and world championship title. Estonian Anna Marie Randle finished in second place with Nicole Cadet coming in third. In runabout GP4 category, Estonian Henry Kopas cruised to victory in Moto 1 but wasn't able to repeat his success in the other two motos. Karl Keskula of Estonia won Moto 2 and Alejandro Prats Palau won Moto 3. Overall, Karl Keskula took the top spot on the podium with Alejandro Prats Palau in second and Estonian Artie Molter in third. 
In runabout GP2, Matthias Seaman put on a show by sweeping all three motos and claiming his place on the top of the podium. Peter Dryak of Czechia placed second and Alessandro Fracasso from Italy came in third. It's finally time for Moto2 in the runabout division, which will decide who walks away with a Grand Prix title in Olbia. Can Seaman repeat his earlier success? Can Jeremy Perez finally break his unlucky streak of back-to-back -back breakdowns? It'll all be decided after the parade lap. The lights are off and the race is on with a stellar start from Samuel Johansson as he goes full throttle and takes the whole shot. Wisniewski also makes a great start and moves into second position. Johansson leads the pack to the parallel section and manages to navigate through it, keeping his position. But just behind him, Seaman attacks Wisniewski and manages to outpace the Polish rider to move into second. At the end of the first lap, it's Johansson first, Seaman second, Wisniewski third and Midori fourth. Samuel Johansson is having a great race, pushing his ski hard. Can he win this moto and protect his championship lead? While the top three remain the same, there is a battle taking place further down in the race. Araujo in fifth and Lindbergh in sixth, along with Riquelme in seventh and Perez in eighth are all jostling for position. Coming out of the parallel, Perez manages to overtake Riquelme to move up to seventh. Coming into lap four, the gap between Johansson in first and Seaman in second is getting smaller with the Estonian attacking the Swede and waiting for his chance to overtake. <laughs> On lap six, the battle between Wisniewski and Midori heats up and the Frenchman constantly pushing for an opportunity to pass. At the end of the seventh lap, Wisniewski comes out of the parallel ahead of Midori, but decides to take the penalty buoy and cuts across the French rider's line. They almost collide with only inches separating the two skis. Both riders continue with Midori now in third. A little farther back, Perez manages to pass Lindbergh to move up into sixth place, but the Swede immediately tries to attack on the inside. The two riders are too close and can't avoid a collision. Both riders stumble, but Lindbergh is quicker to recover and keeps sixth place. At the ninth lap, Araujo in fifth place comes to an abrupt stop and cannot get his ski to start. Sadly, his race is over. At the last lap, Johansson protects his comfortable lead to win Moto2 and gain those all important championship points. But the man of the hour, Matthias Seaman, comes in second and wins the Regione Sardegna Grand Prix. Great racing from both of the rising young stars. Final results of Moto2 are Samuel Johansson first, Matthias Seaman second, Francois Midori third, Georgi Kasha fourth, and Andrei Wisniewski fifth. The overall results for the Regione Sardegna Grand Prix of Italy are Matthias Seaman at the top of the podium, Samuel Johansson in second place, Francois Midori in third, and Andrei Wisniewski fourth, with Ruben Riquelme coming in fifth. Yeah, I'm super happy about the win in the center moto. This, is, this was of course the goal. Sadly, we lost overall to Seaman. Big congratulations to him, he did an amazing job. But the most important for us is that we are still first in the championship heading into the final race in Indonesia. Yeah, there was not so much waves, but uh, I was more tired. So for me, it was more hard, but uh, I have the results, so I think I can be happy.
As for the World Championship standings, Samuel Johansson moves into the lead with 92 points, with Francois Midori only three points behind in second place. Georgi Kasha is third with 58 points, followed by Lino Arajo in fourth with 51 points. That concludes our highlights from another incredible race in Olbia, Italy. See you in Lake Toba, Indonesia for the grand finale of the 2024 season.